Zoe was beginning to give up all hope, the door to her jail cell was suddenly open. Zoe raised her head to look at the officer standing there. She hadn't seen this particular policeman before. She could barely believe the words coming from the officer's mouth. Please come with me, Ms. Fuller. You're being released. When she entered the lobby and saw Blaine standing there, Blaine's heart hurt as he took in the sight of her. Her clothes were rumpled and her hair hung in a messy curtain around her face. And Zoe's face appeared red and puffy. As he examined her face, Blaine's gray eyes grew darker and he frowned. Who did this? He asked Zoe. The fear in Zoe's eyes made Blaine's anger turn into fury. The desk sergeant was shocked, and his voice trembled when he answered. Dr. Dexter, that would be Officer Grissom, but he's not on duty today. I'll call him right now. Dr. Dexter, please wait a moment. Not bothering to answer the man, Blaine turned back and once again his gaze focused on Zoe's injured face. Suddenly, Zoe remembered something and pulled back into Blaine's embrace. Looking up nervously, she asked him, Sophia, how is she doing? She's in critical condition. Blaine answered truthfully with a hint of worry in his eyes. She has severe head trauma and has fallen into a coma. She's relying on a ventilator to breathe. Officer Grissom is here. The desk sergeant announced from where he'd been anxiously watching the parking lot. Officer Grissom was startled when he saw Zoe, but soon after, his eyes widened as he furiously shouted, Who let this woman out? Didn't I say to keep her in lockup until she pleads guilty, huh? When Blaine saw Officer Grissom's hostile attitude towards Zoe, he walked over and without a word, punched him in the face. Officer Grissom was taken aback by the sudden punch as he clutched his nose and stared at Blaine. How does it feel to take a punch from someone bigger, stronger, and more powerful than you? Blaine asked coldly, his dark eyes shooting out a frightening light. Officer Grissom swallowed nervously and glanced at Zoe. After a long time, he finally looked at Zoe again and reluctantly said, I'm sorry. Officer Grissom, hold out your hand. Blaine ordered firmly. Blaine opened his hand. There was a brooch in his hand. Blaine threw it on the desk counter and coldly said, Officer Grissom, since you neglected to do your job, I have done it for you. I found this brooch on the floor of the hunter's trap. There are obvious traces of blood on the brooch. You can take it and examine it to see if the blood on it matches Miss Fuller's, but I can guarantee you, it will. Grissom's face turned completely pale. Blaine led Zoe out of the police station. Blaine, thank you. Thank you for being the only one who believes in me. Zoe cried even harder after she finished her sentence. I should have suspected you like everyone else. Even I saw you let go of Sophia's hand, but I just didn't believe it. I don't believe you are that kind of person. Blaine's words managed to draw a fresh batch of tears out of Zoe. Zoe, he suddenly said. His voice was gentle. Yes, she replied in a choked whisper. About you and me. Blaine's voice was rough and contained a bit of pain. Finally, he lowered his head and looked Zoe in the eyes. Does Matthew know? Zoe was stunned by his question. He paused before continuing. Zoe, I don't want to become someone who doesn't care about other people's feelings because of you. If we continue, then I'm no better than you and Matthew four years ago. The positions are reversed, but no less wrong. The words made her heart hurt. How she wanted to tell him that they shared a lovely child between them. However, she couldn't say anything. Blaine looked away from her, back up at the night sky. If you and Matthew are happy, you will have a good life. As for me, I will do my best to wish you happiness. Zoe's tears flowed without restraint. She nodded heavily. I also wish you and her endless happiness. Thus, the two fell into a long silence. Zoe brought flowers to Sophia. She was in the VIP room of the hospital, but it seemed strangely empty. Sophia was still in critical condition. Sophia, I don't know if you can hear what I'm going to say, but I hope you can. Zoe paused and took a deep breath before continuing. First of all, I want to say I sincerely apologize. I'm really very sorry. Also, about what happened in the cave that day? Zoe lowered her eyebrows. I hope that it was really an accident and not something you planned with utmost care. A few minutes later, Zoe walked out of Sophia's room. 
Unbeknownst to her, Sophia had finally opened her dull eyes with much difficulty. Her hatred for Zoe had given her strength, and her hands placed on either side of her body began to tremble as she attempted to lift them. Hatred poured out of her eyes. Zoe was still entangled with her fiancé. As soon as Zoe walked into her room, Sophia immediately began formulating another plan. Hi, Zoe here. If you are wondering what happens next, then download the Pocket FM app and listen to the exciting episodes of Rekindled Heartache Now.